Good morning. morning. Grace and peace to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I welcome you this morning as we gather for worship on this particular Sunday. Okay, I'm going to do a poll. Okay, you just respond by raising your hand. Fruit pie or cream pie? Fruit pie. Cream pie. Okay. All right. All right. Let's let's do, we're going to dive a little deeper into this. Apple pie or a berry pie? Apple pie. Berry pie. A la mode or not? A la mode. Not. Very good. Wow. (laughs) Cream pies. Chocolate. Coconut. Peanut butter. Lemon. Or just give me a piece of cake. (laughs) There is a reason why I've asked for this survey. If you've read your your Sunday uh, message uh, that came in this morning, today is March the 14th, 3.14. 3.14159266 blah, 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 blah. It is Pi Day, the mathematical equation about the relationship of uh, circumference, uh, you know, that sort of, all that sort of thing. Happy Pi Day. As we begin our service this morning, I remind you of the safety protocols of the congregation with regard to COVID, masking, distancing. Uh, sign the, signing the cards that are located at each pew so that we might, if need, uh, provide tracing for individuals should there be an outbreak uh, among our group. Um, also, uh, as you leave the sanctuary, please exit using the, uh, the side aisles af- after our service has concluded and enjoy fellowship with one another out on the the front porch and uh, the front lawn of the church after our service has concluded today. Elders uh, of of Westminster and Palmasola are reminded of their respective session meetings that will take place this week. Uh, Westminster session meets tomorrow at 1 p.m. at the Westminster facility. The Palmasola session is meeting on Tuesday evening at 6.30 by Zoom. Also, uh, we we are continuing in our weekly uh, Bible study, uh, Lenten study. Uh, This week, we will be considering the topic or the object of shoes. As we meet at 2 p.m. on Zoom, there will be a link to the Zoom meeting uh, for for folks who'd like to participate uh, during the midweek email that will come out. And also, if you're unable to participate in the live discussion and conversation, you're certainly welcome to watch the the recorded version of that, which will be posted on Thursday. The men are are invited or reminded uh, to to participate in tomorrow or Thursday morning's uh, men's discussion group. It begins at 8 a.m. and is is held by Zoom. If you'd like to, to participate in that, please contact the church office and we will see that we send you the link so that you can participate in that discussion. It, it is a wide ranging conversation. So, so feel free if you'd like to, to join us to participate in that as well. In the coming weeks, uh, you, we, will, we will move further into the season of Lent. We will celebrate Holy Week with our Palm Passion Sunday that will take place in two weeks. And then on Easter Sunday, you are invited, you are reminded that you can come to worship even earlier than today 
if you go out to the Palmasola Botanical Gardens and participate in our sunrise service that is scheduled to begin at roughly 7.10 that Easter morning. And then there will be a service later here at the church uh, that will start at 10 a.m. as well. Those are the primary um, uh, announcement that, um, announcements that I have for you this morning. Uh, I believe Andrea Harmon lurking was lurking over there, hiding from me um, to make the outreach announcements for today. Good morning. Now that I'm super hungry, um, I can announce some of the ways that you can be involved in ministry and mission through the church this month. Um, our, first of all, our March Does It Done on Every Sunday project is collecting food items for Minnesota Operation Troop Support. Um, MOTS is a nonprofit organization that supports our troops both overseas, locally, and their families. And they, one of their projects is sending monthly care packages to deployed service members. And there's a lot of great snack and food items that they are in need of. For those care packages, you can look online at our website or in the March newsletter or pick up a sheet outside on those items that are needed and we will be collecting them through the month of March. Um, the, as we have gotten to our one year anniversary of the pandemic, we wanted to try to find a way to thank some of our first responders that have had a pretty difficult year. Um, we are going to purchase uh, pizza, pizza lunches for our first responders, starting with West Manatee Fire Department. And um, we are going to deliver those on the 25th, but we have some great, nice posters, thank you posters, that we would love for you to sign um, so that they can know how much they are appreciated from people in our community. They're on tables outside, and we'll also have them next Sunday as well. Um, our outreach offering for the month is our daily bread. Our daily bread serves hot lunches to at least 250 people every single day, as well as operating a food pantry um, where people can come in and do their own shopping. Um, if you would like to contribute to that, just make your check out to PSPC with our daily bread in the memo line. Um, we've gotten a great response to our cards that, that we've asked you to fill out to send to members that are not able to come to worship or comfortable coming to in-person worship, and we're sending them out to um, members of both congregations, so we ask that you take a pack of those and please keep that up as I know it's really making a difference for a lot of people. And lastly, there is an outdoor movie night planned for March 26th. It's a Friday night at 7.30 p.m. in the East parking lot. Um, the movie is Singing in the Rain, that classic musical that should be tons of fun for the spring. Just bring a chair, a friend or three, your face mask, and popcorn and drinks will be provided, and the movie is free to the public as well. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Andrea. Let us, as we continue our worship, quiet our hearts and our minds as we continue in our service today.
Hear these words from the psalmist. Give thanks to the Lord who is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. And so we gather this day to give thanks for the goodness of our Lord. Thank you. 
In John we read, this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, for people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Let us this morning uncover our sin before the liberating light of Christ as we join together in prayer. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess the folly of our sin, the hypocrisy of our complaints. We grumble about the evils in our world even as we commit injustices and profit through deceit. We fret about the scarcity of resources while we hoard the goods and cheat the poor. We protest the problems of our world, but we do not actively work to address them. Merciful God, expose our sins before the light of your grace. Heal our sin and free us from our foolish ways that we may know the joy of eternal life in Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. John also reminds us that God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. It is in the name of Jesus Christ that we know, we are confident that we have been forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Our first reading today is from the book of Numbers, reading from the 21st chapter. I invite you this morning to listen for the word of the Lord. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness, where there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food? Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. And our second reading today is from the third chapter of John, beginning with the 14th verse. I invite you to listen also for these words. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that, the, that their deeds have been done in God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Maybe you're a bit like me this morning, feeling uh, hard, it, hard to maintain a bit of coherence. We're all suffering the effects of time change hangovers. Just yesterday, about this time, maybe you were sipping on your first cup of coffee or you were settling in to read the newspaper Maybe you were just enjoying life as you knew it on Eastern Standard Time. And then, under the cover of darkness, an hour was taken from you through the guise of daylight savings time. If you're like me, when you woke up this morning, you looked at the clock and you wondered, where has this day gone? And so, since we're all a bit sleep deprived, I thought it would be, would be best to go ahead and deliver this morning's sermon punchline at the very beginning of the sermon. Here it is. You are the greatest object of, you are the object of the greatest love ever known. Now, if you keep that statement in mind, um, it, will, it will sustain you through this so that later in the day if someone asks you what the preacher preached about, that's what you can tell them. And if you need, from this point on, to kind of close your eyes and try to recover a little bit of that sleep time, feel free. The Gospel of John begins with the announcement of a light. A light that is coming into the world. We read in the prologue in that first chapter of John that the word brings life, which was the light of all people. And we also read that the light shines in the darkness and darkness did not overcome it. Themes of light and dark will be recurrent throughout this gospel's account. 
The third chapter of John begins in darkness. It retells for us a conversation that took place between Jesus and Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a member of the religious group called the Pharisees. Now, Pharisees were made distinct in the community by an intentional desire or intentional actions of separation, of keeping themselves distanced from certain activities, from certain peoples in those communities. One group that they would re refrain from associating with were Gentiles. So when you read throughout the gospel accounts that the, gen that the Pharisees grumbled that Jesus was going into the homes of sinners, it was their intention to remain pure, to remain separate from those that were, well, unworthy. They would also refrain from any kind of impurity. They would, would keep themselves away from sitting at tables with those that were deemed by society or by the laws of Moses to be um, sinners or impure. And they would also, they took, well, they, they would also refrain from any association with those non-religious Jews of their community. Much like the Gentiles of, of their community, the Pharisees had nothing to do, wanted nothing to do with you except if you were practicing good religious behavior. They took pride in their knowledge and their observances of the laws of Moses. They were the exemplars in piety and in knowledge of the scripture, of the law and the prophets. They viewed themselves and were likely viewed by many in the community as, well, deeply intellectual and very, very spiritual. Nicodemus's visit to Jesus comes in the darkness, and it symbolizes a couple of things. One being this, this motif of, of secrecy, uh, a hiding, uh, an attempt to avoid being recognized, it also acknowledges what the prologue has declared about Jesus being the true light that comes to dispel the darkness. The narrator of this gospel uses this encounter between these two to make three very bold affirmations about Jesus as the Son of Man and as the Son of God. The first is that Jesus is the Son of Man, the one who descended from heaven and who alone can reveal heavenly things. The second is that the purpose of Jesus coming from heaven is that those who believe, whoever believes in him, might have eternal life. And the third affirmation is that Jesus' descent from heaven, his servant life, his death on the cross, are all expressions of God's love for the world. So again, the central thought for today's sermon, the takeaway from today is, you are the object of the greatest love ever known. On what basis might we trust that statement? Sure, most of us in this room today can probably quote John 3.16's words, For God so loved the world that God gave his only Son. The basis for that claim is known through the cross. For as we look to the cross of Christ, we recognize the depth of God's love for us. When we look at the cross of Christ, we know that we will live. Jesus says so in the verse that begins the reading for today. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. In the life, the death, and resurrection of Jesus, God intervened to give life to everyone in the world who will receive that gift. The, ver the, the verses that follow that pro profound verse of, of 16 says that God's purpose in sending the Son wasn't to condemn the world, but it was to save it. It's also there that Jesus says there will be no middle ground. There will be no gray area. 
When one believes in Jesus, they have been gifted with eternal life. And if one does not believe, then they have rejected the primary quality of God. That is, they have rejected God's love. To whom does this passage apply? One commentary that I read this week suggested that Nicodemus represents not the sinners of the community, not those who had, had rejected or turned away, but Nicodemus instead represents all those devout people, those people who are, say, loyal to a congregation, to a denomination, but who still know the darkness of an unsatisfied hunger for God. They are, in many instances, the pillars or considered to be the pillars of any church. But they still know and wonder. They still experience a darkness in their lives. And often, like Nicodemus, they are unafraid to confess Jesus in public. They are the ones who come to Jesus, oftentimes under cover of darkness, asking, Are you the one? or with other more personally pressing questions, like how do I make sense of a pandemic that has claimed so many lives, that has kept us apart from loved ones for much of the past year? Jesus' words for Nicodemus and for us cuts to the essence of our yearning for God. He says plainly to Nicodemus and to us, you must be born from above. You must keep your eyes fixed on the one who God has sent into the world. The one who we know had been lifted up on the cross for our sins. This passage chosen for today echoes the Lenten journey, a journey of repentance that we are, we are sharing this time of the year. It draws us into the drama of the suffering cross, and it reminds us of the redemption of Easter. We are deep in this season of Lent. We are nearing a time of darkness in our journey with Jesus as he makes his way to Jerusalem. We draw close to that time when we know that the cross is coming, and that it must come before we can experience and know the joy of the resurrection. We are near to a time when we must affirm that suffering is sometimes the only path to redemption and that there are times when the road to healing and light runs through darkness and through pain. It's not always an easy message to hear but it is a truthful one. It is a message that is rooted in this promise, that as we look to the cross, we can recognize, we can realize that we are the object of God's great love. Someone in my Twitter feed yesterday posted this statement. They said, the cross wasn't God's response to humanity's sin. It was rather humanity's response to God's love. The cross wasn't God's response to humanity's sin. It was humanity's response to God's love. Friends, you and I this day celebrate and know and claim the promise that God's love for us went to the depths of despair. That God's love for us led to a cross. A cross that we constructed. A cross that we have continued to use to affect lives of people that, well, we don't want to associate with. But here's the joy. And again, for the third time, fourth time today, remember that you are the object of God's great love. And we know that through the power of Christ's cross. 
Thanks be to God. Amen. As we join together in prayer this day, we lift up those in our community who struggle with many different issues, those who face illness, those who are hospitalized, those who mourn the loss of loved ones, those who are uncertain about uh, tomorrow and the day after when it comes to their employment, to their, their ability to live where they do as we join together as a people in prayer. This day, I would ask that you especially keep the family of a young man named TJ in your prayers who is undergoing treatment for cancer and for his family as they, as they navigate a very painful time. Let us join together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, it is through Jesus Christ that Christ, that you bring salvation to the world. Give us strength to believe in him that we may share in his victory over the power of death and that we might fulfill the purpose for which you have made us. Loving God, we walk by your light and we do what is true Yet salvation, we recognize, isn't always, isn't earned by our good works. Rather, it is through our trust in your grace. For those things that we do that are true only come at your urging, only come through the inspiration of your spirit. Dispel from your people an arrogance of heart that all the world might be drawn to your truth by the witness we provide. 
In each generation, you call people of integrity to lead your people in the ways of righteousness. So we pray this day for those who have been called to lead, be that be at congregations or communities or our nation. We ask, O oh God, that you would help us to fulfill our calling to give us courage to speak the truth in love. Merciful God, you hear the cry of the sick and the distressed. We ask that you would save them from whatever it is that controls them and causes them suffering. For those who grieve the loss of loved ones, we ask that your spirit would comfort them in their loss. For those who face the pain and uncertainty of illness, we ask that your healing presence would be with them. We pray, O oh God, this day for those whose homeland is unsafe because of war or corruption, for those whose land yields no food to eat and where water is scarce or unsafe to drink. We pray, O oh God, that you would give us the compassion to serve through our donations, through the technologies that you have gifted us that they might know safety, that they might know welcome, that they may know peace. Oh God, it is in Jesus Christ that you have shown your love for the world. Receive our prayers. Grant us what we need. Save us from perishing and bring us to everlasting life. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, the one lifted high on the cross, the one who is risen and who has risen, has now ascended to be with you and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Not complaining or not. Sweet potato. Pumpkin. Which do you prefer? All of the above? <laughs> so see, I'm going to get a kickback from all the restaurants today. <laughs> I hope. God's love for us is shown in so many ways. It is shown through the outreach of friends, of neighbors, of family. It is seen in the ways communities draw to one another, to support one another during the good times as well as the difficult and painful times. I've seen that happen here in a variety of ways through a gathering of, of people each day supporting one another around my community's pool through the outreach of people to a family that has experienced death. I have seen it in the ways you have cared for one another in your conversations. And I know that you've learned it because you have looked to the cross. You have recognized that it is on the cross that God's love for us is revealed. So, today as you have a piece of pie, or either lunch or dessert or whatever it might end up being, or if it's a piece of cake or a piece of fudge or brownie or whatever it might be that you like, do so remembering that you are the object of God's great love. Share that love with one another. For Christ calls us not to hoard it, not to keep it silent and within us, but to provide it to those that we encounter. As you go from this place today, go remembering that it is in the goodness of God you were born. It is by the grace of God in Jesus Christ you have been redeemed. It is by the power of God through the Holy Spirit that you are sustained today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen.